Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I've got some exciting news. I'm tying the knot. That knot, that knot, and this knot. Hang around, we're going to learn to do the Celtic knot and light burn. Okay, so let's get one thing straight. <clears throat> I am not tying the knot. <laughs> Been there, done that, bought the t-shirt, took it off, and then took it and throwed it in the fire pit with the rest of her stuff. <laughs> we ain't going down that road again. Uh, <clears throat> so we are talking about the Celtic knot. And there's a lot of variations of the Celtic knot, and specifically we're going to be looking at the Traquetra or the Trinity Knot, and a couple of variations of that today. And before some of you start in on me about, oh, that's pagan, that's uh, unholy, that's this, or that's... It's a symbol. And symbols can be appropriated and or misappropriated uh, by various groups and or people to mean what they want it to mean. Uh, for instance, there was a symbol that rose up uh, in the late 600s, early 700s in Buddhism uh, in India. The Chinese, they appropriated it, took it and said, this symbol means good fortune or great wealth. Good fortune, I think. And then some jerk comes along and he takes it. And now when anyone in the world sees it, it's recognized as... Uh, hate and it's the swastika but it was it was misappropriated and stolen and now when someone sees it they don't think good fortune or good wealth or good health or good it's hate so the triquetra or the celtic knot has been around for centuries it goes back as early as uh the uh Norse mythology back before Christ and it's recognized uh, and associated with uh, the Norse god Odin but it's been uh, seen in Norse mythology it's been taken and used by uh, the pagans it's been used by Christianity it's been used by the hippies it's been used by you know any group you can think of so if you don't like this symbol, just don't watch the video and don't fill up the comments with a bunch of stuff because if you do, I'm just going to take another sign that I think was misconstrued in my favorite video or uh, movie, uh, The Beverly Hillbillies, and it's the California High sign. Hi. <laughs> so symbols uh, are just that. They're symbols. And then it's the intent behind them that conveys whatever but we're not going to be getting into any of that we're only looking at designing and creating and let's take a look at a couple of images on google right now these are all uh versions of here is the uh traquetra traquetra that is the uh trinity knot and it has and this one doesn't even show you the interlocking because it's all solid. Here it shows them interlocked. And <clears throat> like I said, it, depending on who you subscribe to or believe, this is uh, in Christianity, it's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then the, with the interlocking uh, circle there, locking them all together, um, there's, uh, what was the other... Uh, the pagans and in uh, and womanhood, whereas I think it's youth, uh, motherly, and then the, an elder, which was a crone, I think. Um, there's a bunch of, of different people who have used this, but we don't care about that today. We just want to draw it in light burn and even use it to uh, create some earrings. So... Regardless which one of those you subscribe to, if you're a Christian, a pagan, a Norse, uh, 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 what is it? Um, oh, shoot. Uh, 
mythology. If you're big and heavy in mythology, we're going to teach you how to draw these and make some earrings even. These are not difficult to replicate. We're going, in fact, we're going to draw uh, that, that one there, the Traquetra. We're going to draw this version of it, just the Trinity Knot, which there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then we'll draw this one, this medieval, which is a uh, Celtic knot, which has got four spears on it instead of the three. So without further ado, let's jump in here to Lightburn. What I'm going to do first is actually create one of these traquetras uh, just straight through. I'm not even going to explain what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you how quickly this can be done. Then I'm going to explain you explain to you what I'm doing and then for those who hang around I'm going to show you why I did what I did and why what you're going to do ain't going to work because you're not going to watch this whole thing and you're going to go <sighs> well you'll be back in the video soon <laughs> so let's watch the design process in real time then I'll explain what I'm doing here we go And there is a Traquetra. I don't see any arrows there. Looks like I got her right. So we're going over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Yep, that's right. So it was not very difficult to do at all. But now let me explain what I did and why I did and what you need to do in order for it to work this smoothly. Now there's going to be a bunch of you who have already checked out and think you're going to have this figured out. Well, I'm going to wait just a second because this is about where you're going to come back into the video after you've failed to do this yourself. Okay, and welcome back to the video. So now that you've gone and you've tried this and it's not worked for you, 
Let me explain why it didn't work for you and what you need to do. And thanks for coming back and joining us. All right. So we're going to delete all this. <clears throat> I start with the ellipse tool, draw out a perfect circle by holding the shift key. We're going to work in line mode. And, well, I wanted a 100 millimeter circle, and that's what I drew. All right, I'm using millimeters here because here I'm just thinking in percentages. So this is 100% of, of the size I want to work with. This is a perfect circle. This is a primitive. If we try to look at nodes, there are no nodes. We need nodes to do what we're doing. You can get nodes by edit and convert to a path. But when you convert to a path and then look at your nodes, that's what you get when you're doing a perfect circle. You get four nodes, north, south, east, and west. I've found that this can sometimes be problematic when you're trying to draw these Celtic knots. So that's not what I do. Go back to line mode. We're in a primitive shape. What I do is I go to my offset tool. Tell it, I, it doesn't really matter, inner or outer. We're going to do a zero offset, and we're going to delete the original object. Now in nodes, you can see there are a ton of nodes here. There's not just one node or four nodes. This works better for me in this design process. I still have a 100 millimeter perfect circle, but it is uh, a... It's no longer a primitive shape. It is uh, a path with tons and tons of nodes. All right, now I need just to select that one. I'm going to hit Control D. That duplicated it right on top of it. But now I'm going to come up here to my uh, measurements, my height and width. And since my aspect ratio is locked, I'm going to re reduce it by 15% and just tell it 85 millimeters. Now I'm going to come back to my original one. <clears throat> I'm going to duplicate that, Control D. And I'm going to take it to 120 millimeters or increase it by 20%. With that one selected, I'm going to say Control D. And I'm going to reduce it down to 105 millimeters or approximately 15%. It's not quite, but that's you get the idea. All right. Now I have <clears throat> two pairs of circles. I'm going to pair the outer two and group those together and I'll select these two and group those together. Now what I'm going to do is take that outer pair and bring it down until I've got a, around a crescent moon shape right here. This this piece right here I'm looking for a crescent moon. And this, the further you bring this down is going to determine the size of this inner shape you create here and the amount of overlapping you have going on out here. Now what I'm going to do is select that out that first pair and then the original or the with the smaller circle we'll use the circular array tool. Tell it I want to move three copies. Make sure that you are um, Using the last selected object position as center is turned on. Rotating objects don't really matter here, and the auto increment doesn't really matter. But you want to have this turned on, because if you don't have that turned on, that's what you get. You get something freaky going on. So you want to use the last selected object position as center. Say OK. Now, I'm going to duplicate this, Control D and set this out of the way for right now. I'm going to come back to this shape. you got to remember, we paired those circles, so we have three pairs and then the center pair. So there's four pairs. We want to ungroup everything. Then go into node editing. Once we've gone into node editing, we get all of those nodes on all of those circles but all we have to do is come over here on these three pairs, on the outermost pairs, and we're going to hit the letter T for trim. T. Get our crosshairs, T. 
Same thing here, look for our crosshairs, T, 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 and T. Now there's the, the, the root or the foundational shape of that traquetra, traquetra. Now what we need to do is fix all of our overlappings. Well, all of these three points are just solid points. There are no overlapping. So go ahead and get rid of all those inner lines in there. So that doesn't mess you up when we're going to start figuring out our overlappings. Or our overlaps. All right. I think of this like a little racetrack. And I've got a little car starting up right up here in this corner. And he's going to come down through here and he's got to be able to pass over this circle. So in order to pass over it, this inner two lines have got to go bye-bye. And down here, he needs to go under. In order to go under, these have got to go bye-bye. So I go inners and then outers. And that's what I'm saying in my head as I go through this without having to think too much. I just start up here and the inner two, and I'm using the letter T, just T, T. That's inner, inner. I come to outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer, inner, inner's already gone, outer, outer, inner, inner, Outer, outer is already gone. Inner, inner is already gone. Outer, outer. Now that's your basic shape. Now in order for me to give it some B for some definition, I use the offset tool again. And this time I do both inner and outer. I'm doing a millimeter. And I'm using the round corner style and not the corner because if you look here using round all that gives you a really nice uh, line there a finished edge you use corners you get that so use your round inner and outward direction delete the original objects and say okay now you can put her in a line mode or a fill mode and now you have drawn your first traquetra Now, set that over there out of the way. We're going to come back over here. I'm going to grab this one. We're going to bring it back to there. In fact, what I'm going to do is make Control D. I should have just duplicated. Let's put that back out of the way. <clears throat> now, for this one, I'm going to select those that inner piece there, the inner circle, and delete. Ungroup everything, go to node editing. We're going to get rid of those outer ones by hitting the letter T, 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 T. And what do I do up there? There we go. All right. And now I need to get rid of the, <clears throat> make the outer pieces solid by hitting T, 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 T. T, T. Now, I'm deleting these by going inners, inners, outer, outer. And when I'm doing an inner, inner, I'm like, you know, again, if this was a racetrack, these are inside the racetrack. These are the outside edge of my racetrack. And that makes no sense to some of you, but to me, it makes perfect sense. So that was inners, inners, and then outers, outers. This will be inner and inner. Is that right? So it's over, under, oh, nope, I did that wrong. Oh, that's because I did not, I got sidetracked telling you what I was doing and didn't pay attention. Come back here, nodes. So that's inner, inner, outer, outer, and then here, inner, inner, and the outer, outer, there we go. That's better. So 
So now without the nodes coming around, it's going over, under, over, under, over, under, over, over, under. And then same thing again. I'll do the offset, do outward and inward both. Use round and delete the original objects. And you can put that in a fill mode. And now you have the Trinity knot. Now let's look at this one more time. We're going to take this and we're going to delete that pair, delete that pair. So we've got the original smaller one with the original larger one. We're going to do select that pair and select this pair, go back to our circular array. But now we're going to do four copies and say OK. Select everything. Ungroup them all. Go into node editing. Starting out at our outermost perimeter. Using the letter T. 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 Okay. Now we need to make our outer point solid by going to those T. T. Oop, wrong one. You got to get that cursor in the right spot. Now, I hate you can't just undo. You all the way back out and select everything. Go back into nodes. Now, zoom in. There we go. T. 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 All right. Now the outers are, are now solid. So now we can start our racetrack. I'm getting a little car on my track here. Come in. I'm going enters using the letter T. It's all we're using is T for trim. Enter. Enter. I get to this one. I need to be outer. Outer. Enter. Enter. Outer. Outer. Enter. Enter. Outer. Outer. Coming around. Inner hair, outer, inner, outer's already gone, inner, outer, coming on around, inner, outer's already gone, inner, outer's already gone, inner's already gone, outer. Enter. Outer's already gone. Enter's already gone. Enter. Outer. Enter. And then, or uh, enter and then outer. And that's that. Select that whole thing. Offset. Enter and outward. One millimeter using. Nope, using rounds. Say so, okay. Put that in a fill. So there's three variations on the Celtic knot. And you see those were very quickly done once you understand the the science and the math and uh, the inners, the outers, the overs, unders. But now let me show you why I, I converted those to paths. Because if we come up here, we draw out a perfect circle. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to do 100 millimeters. Let's do the red in line mode. Duplicate that. Right now, it's still a perfect circle. I'm not changing it. So Control D and tell it to do 85 millimeters. So the only thing that I've done different so far is I've not converted this to a path or done the offset. So now come here, say Control D, and I'm going to tell it to do 120. Control D to duplicate that and tell it 105. So we've got that same basic design going on here. I'm going to do the same process, grouping these together. Do our 
our circular array. Ungroup everything and you try to go to nodes. You don't see any nodes, but it's okay. You know, with everything grouped, you can just go up here to edit and convert to a path. Go to nodes, and now you got nodes, and now you can do your trim. But watch what happens. If I come up here and I hit the letter T, 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 T. Well, am I going to have no problems this time? Oh, there's one. All right, undo. Let's grab all that again, go back into node editing. So you've seen everything was working great. If I come up here, though, and I'm right here, just I want to hit the letter T just like I've done the other previous times. I don't delete just that piece, it deletes all the way down here. So let's move on forward. If that didn't fail, let's see what happens when we try to do these. Inner, T, T, outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer, inner, inner. Outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer. Okay, so that time I only had one mishap, which was this piece here. I did not want, when I hit the trim to trim away the line that went from here to here, It deleted from there all the way down to here. It will not do that if you do the offsets instead of converting to a path. I've, I've found that when you convert to a path, sometimes it's just this little piece that goes away. Sometimes this whole line, uh, let's see, didn't want to do that. Let's go back here. Uh, when you do the initial trim, when you're getting rid of this, overall out here sometimes see how it goes all the way down here sometimes when you hit T for trim for just that big old piece outside every bit of that will go away from there all the way around so that's why I do offsets instead of converting to path uh, converting to path always creates problems Problems you can fix in node editing if you're really, really familiar with node editing. In fact, uh, let's go all the way back to where I first seen that go away. In fact, let's take her back to that point. So here, go into node editing. If I hit the letter T, T. Let's see, it's working like it's supposed to, T. T, oop, I didn't mean to move that, so let's, well, we ain't going to worry about that right now. T, and here when you try to hit the letter T, it's that whole thing goes bye-bye, so that don't work. So what you end up having to do, if you did not convert to, uh, or if you did not do offsets, if you convert to path, you can still save your pattern by undoing that, get back to that point, Select that line, go into node editing, come in here to this intersection and hit the letter I for insert. Now I'll hover over this node and hit the letter D. Now you can go back, select everything, go back into nodes, and do your inner, inner, outer outer inner inner outer outer inner inner outer outer inner inner outer outer inner 
inner, outer, outer, inner, inner, outer, outer. So you can still save it, save it that way, but you you have to be aware that those things can happen because you might be halfway through the design and then find out that something disappeared you didn't want it to. So do the offsets instead of converting to a path, and that eliminates those headaches. Now there's going to be a bunch of people who have already checked out of this, and they're not going to watch this, and they're going to think, well, why did he do those offsets? I don't need to do that. And they're going to try to do this themselves and have those anomalies popping up left and right and that's what they get for not hanging around and and watching this and understanding why I do what I do when I do what I do so let's delete that now uh, if you've not had a lot of experience making earrings let's show you how you can take these and let's start with the the basic uh, Trinity knot real quick uh, with that selected, I'll do an offset. We're going to do an outward offset and outer shapes only. Select the resulting. We do not want to delete. Say OK. Now with that selected, put it on the cut path. And you can do this a couple of ways. I Personally, I, what I do is I size my, my earring first, and if I go back to inches, typically when I cut out an earring, the biggest I make it's about 1.8 millimeters. So this largest dimension up here, 4.7, I'll make that 1.8. Oh, I needed to group all that, undo that, select all of it rather, and make the whole thing 1.8. I know that the jump rings I use are um, eight tenths of a millimeter, so I will draw a 1.6 millimeter circle and then offset that one millimeter, say OK. And I do double the diameter of my jump ring so that it fits nice. Then I will group those two, center those up over that. Ungroup those. Grab those two and weld them together. Now I group my cutouts together. Now that is ready to cut out as a solid Trinity knot. If you want to have these cut out, you can do it a couple of ways. When you do your offset, offset, you want to do, turn off your outer shapes only, do an outward I'm doing a millimeter and there's a little something funky going on right there. Select resulting, tell it to go to, there we go. Okay, yeah, so that whole line right there, ungroup all that. That, gotta put her all in line mode. Say okay. These, ungroup that. These inner cuts need to go bye bye. There we go. that back in feel and bring my jump ring back into play my hoop my my circle for my jump ring
and now that will cut out. And I've got my line interval set so that that creates a neat little crosshatch with the crosshatch setting and the line after fill where it kind of looks like a rope instead of just solid engraving. So there's my Trinity knot earring. So this, this video is getting long. I don't want to be known as, oh my God, here we go. Another 40 minutes of Steve. So we're going to let this one come to an end here. I hope you found this informative. I hope you learned a thing or two. And uh, if you have not considered signing up for Patreon, man, I really appreciate it. if you get over there and sign up, become a supporter, help this channel keep growing and, and going. Um, HoboWithWood.com. I'm going to have these designs on HoboWithWood.com as earrings, so you can just buy the ready-to-cut-out design. You don't have to do all this design work. HoboWithWood.com. If you don't want to be a regular supporter on Patreon, then on HoboWithWood.com, up in the top menus, there's an option for Adopt a Hobo. Adopt a Hobo is a, a way for you to just say, hey, you know what? Thank you for what you do, and uh, let me buy you a biscuit. I got a Bojangles that's right next door to me. I'll take that and go over and buy me a Bowberry and enjoy a breakfast biscuit and say thank you. So until the next video, I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood. And I started to give you the California high sign, but I'm out.